release form. And in this release form, it said my wife, myself, or any member of our family could never, ever take Monsanto to court again for the rest of our lives, no matter how much they contaminate us in the future on our land or on this farm. And we said there's no way we will ever, ever do that. And the other thing in the release form, they said that our freedom of speech would be taken away. In other words, we could never, ever talk what the terms of settlement were. I couldn't even talk to you here this morning. So we said to them, there's no way we're going to give up our freedom of speech. There's too many people in our countries. The United States and Canada have given our lives for the freedom of speech and we'll never give it away to a corporation. Monsanto said, if you don't sell, sign the release, then we will not remove the offending plants, the GMO Monsanto plants. And we said to Monsanto, we, with the help of our neighbors, will remove the contamination. And then my wife received a very nasty email or fax from Monsanto and said, we wish to remind you that those GMO plants on your field, Monsanto's GMO plants on your field, are not your property. They're Monsanto's property through patent law, and you cannot do with them what you want. And we notified Monsanto, we will do what we want with those plants. They're on our land, our property, and we paid the taxes, we own the land, and we did remove the plants. You mean they were threatening you now not to remove them? Not the to remove them because it was their property and we could not do with them what we want because they have a patent on it. They own it, even though it's on our land. So we removed the plants and with the help of our neighbors, and this is very unusual, we paid our neighbors 640 Canadian dollars, and then we sent Monsanto the bill. And Monsanto refused to pay it, and eventually after another year of, of letters going back and forth, Monsanto said they would pay the $640 plus a $20 cost if we would sign that document. We refused to do that. So I'll never forget March 19, 2007, or eight, and uh, it went to, at the beginning of the court, the, the Monsanto's lawyer got up and said, Your Honor, we will pay, well, there was mediation and everything before that, we will pay the $640 and the $20 cost. The whole issue was never the $640. The whole issue now became liability. If Monsanto owns the patent on a gene and you cannot control it, when you put it in the environment as a seed, in a seed or in a plant, then they should be responsible for the damages they do to organic farmers and conventional farmers. So that was a major victory because now it has set a precedent that if a farmer is contaminated, he can seek relief in the courts to, that the damage, that the contamination damage is paid for or taken care of. So it's worldwide. So we were very happy after 10 years of legal battle that we finally had a corporation, first of all, like a corporation of Monsanto, to have a billion dollar corporation plus in court on a $640 bill. So Canadian farmer and right livelihood laureate Percy Schmeiser describing his struggle with Monsanto. We'll come back to his story in a minute. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. We're broadcasting from Bonn, Germany. 
We broadcast on over 850 stations on Pacific and NPR and low-power FM and college and community radio stations on public access TV and PBS TV stations and both TV satellite networks, Dish Network, Channel 9415, Free Speech TV, 9410, Link TV and Direct TV, Channel 375, and we're video and audio podcasting at democracynow.org. Our headlines available in Spanish for any radio station to take, as over 250 are. We are here in Bonn for the 30th anniversary of the Right Livelihood Award winners. About 80 of them have gathered here. Before we go back to our interview with the Right Livelihood Award winner, Percy Schmeiser, I want to turn back to an excerpt from the documentary Percy Schmeiser, David versus Monsanto, about Percy and his wife Louise, how they were repeatedly threatened after they took on Monsanto. It, it was scary at times. You just never known. And the phone calls, you know, where there would be somebody on the line saying, you better watch it, they're going to get you. So it was pretty scary, and I was very concerned when I was gone uh, that something would happen. To and when they would watch us, especially in our own house here, they watched days on end every move we made in our house and for our, our office would be used for the land. Uh, I felt like I was a prisoner in my own home. They did everything to bring us down financially and mentally. And that's what they're doing, is to mentally and financially break people. They're just, they are totally ruthless. They have no ethics. They have no morals. It's the bottom line. An excerpt from the documentary Percy Schmeiser, David versus Monsanto. Here in Bonn, I asked Percy Schmeiser yesterday to talk about how things stand now between, well, he, Louise, and Monsanto. I hope my battle with Monsanto is over, but I realize that as long as I bring awareness around the world, what Monsanto's patent, not only Monsanto's patent, but Wire, Syngenta, DuPont, what their patents do for the control of the future of our seed. And, uh, and our food supply. And that's what it was all about. GMOs were never meant to feed a hungry or starving world. They were meant to get control of Hermes seed supply. That gives them the control of the world food supply. And so that's where we stand at now, to bring that awareness around the world. Uh, Percy Schmeiser, we're sitting here in Bonn, Germany, and you're traveling through Germany. In fact, there is a law here named for you, the Schmeiser Law. Mm -hmm. People here are extremely interested in your case. What is the Schmeiser Law? Basically is that here in Germany that if a farmer is contaminated with Monsanto's GMOs, uh, Monsanto cannot come after that farmer to see or to seize their, their crop, whatever it may be, or take them to court if they are contaminated. And how much of an issue is that here in Germany? That's a big issue because that has become, I think, also in North America, a big issue, the liability issue. And to give you an extent of that is that in North America, a farmer cannot, if he grows GMOs, he cannot get genetic in, uh, insurance. So if, but I, I should go back that at, at the last lawsuit with Monsanto, in the courts initially before the final one, um, uh, Monsanto said, first of all, the farmer is responsible for the contamination because he knows if he grows GMOs, he will contaminate his neighbor by whatever means. When that did not go over in the courts, then Monsanto said the government is responsible for the contamination because they give us regulatory approval to sell it. And that did not go over. And so in the end, Monsanto paid for the contamination cleanup. So that has become a very big issue around the world that if you have a patent on a gene, doesn't give you the right to release into the environment where it destroys biodiversity, where it, it destroys organic farmers and so on. And I think it has become a bigger issue in Europe now is because the organic industry, I believe, is much stronger in European countries than it is in North America, although it's growing very fast in both our countries, in the United States and Canada. Percy Schmeiser, you mentioned that you figured out that probably your property was contaminated the second time with GMO, with uh, Monsanto GMO crops. How did you know that? Well, what happened was that um, uh, we were using this 50-acre uh, piece of land for, as I mentioned, as mu for mustard research, and we did not grow any crop that year. And uh, we had uh, used a, uh, a herbicide on it, and there were canola plants that did not die, and that field did not have canola in for at least 10 years. Where did it come from? 
And so we did testing then with, we, we from our neighbor, got a little bit of Roundup, Monsanto's herbicide Roundup, and we sprayed it on 10 plants. And then st those plants were marked. And then when they did not die, after about 12 days, we realized it had to have some sort of, uh, some of Monsanto.